latest Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen today we have the latest puzzle from the Sudoku professor, Richard Stolk. And this is the uh, most recent release in his Sudoku variant series. I think it's number 293 in that series. Quite simply the most extraordinary uh, collection of Sudoku puzzles um, that's ever been made. Every single one of these 293 puzzles has a different rule set. Um, quite, quite staggering. Uh, and there are reports on this one. Well, it's not too difficult today. Sort of three, three stars out of five. And of course, extremely highly rated, as indeed are all the puzzles we feature on Cracking the Cryptic. Um, now, a couple of things to mention before we get started with this. Uh, firstly, uh, our Kickstarter campaign. Do check it out if you've not had a look. The card on the screen there. This is our quest to create the greatest Sudoku book that has ever been made. Uh, we are well on track to do that. I've been receiving um, some puzzles from the authors featured in the book. Um, so the way the book's going to work is obviously we've got 26 puzzles I think that Mark and I have selected. There's going to be 10 puzzles that you guys select for the book from, our, uh, from all of the videos that we've featured on the channel uh, over the years. And then those authors that are featured in the book are also going to be providing a new puzzle. And yeah, I've been getting some of these. They are absolutely stunning. So this is this book is going to be something else. I can tell you that already. Um, yeah, so I, ho I hope uh, you enjoy taking a look at it. Um, now, the other thing I want to mention, I've been asked about this a lot recently, is our upcoming Killer Sudoku app and where it is. Well, yes, it's not out yet. I know you've realized that. Um, it is on its way to being out. Um, I'm still in the process of testing uh, some of the puzzles from the contributors. We have got an incredible selection of authors who have been providing... Uh, killer Sudokus that will appear in the game. Uh, so if I mention some names to you, uh, Fister Maffel, uh, Bastian Valjem, uh, Christoph Seliger, uh, Prasanna Sashadri, and uh, and indeed Mr. Stolk, Richard Stolk, whose puzzle we are doing today has also provided puzzles. And of course, Sam Kaplan Lines. I mustn't miss Sam out. So we are, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be quite incredible. And um, obviously there'll be some puzzles by Mark and, Mark and me as well. So, um, I think of, of all the apps we've done, it, it's, it really is, it's incredible. I mean, I was testing one of the puzzles this morning and it is just off the charts good. Um, but one of the downsides of these puzzles being so good is that they do take time to test. They do take time to create the hints for, um, and we know the hints are a big important part of the game. So you have to bear with us. It'll probably be another couple of weeks, I would think, before the game is ready to come out. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get on to um, a Sudoku Switch, as it's called. And indeed, Richard Stolt credits Fistmafell uh, for the inspiration behind this puzzle. Uh, interesting rule set today. Uh, what we've got is, let me try and read them to you. We have got normal Sudoku rules and we've got normal killer Sudoku rules. So you can see there's some cages in the grid. We've got to make sure that, for example, those yellow squares there sum up to 28 without repeating a digit. Now, the next part of the rules is the interesting part, and that concerns these outside clues. Now, clues outside the grid indicate the number of switches between connected series of digits of the same parity, odd or even, in the respective row or column. Such a series can consist of a single digit. OK, so if, for example, we look at the three clue here, what that's telling us is that when we look along the row, Let's imagine it starts with an, I don't know, an odd digit. Then wherever the even digits come, oh, let's put some even digits in. Uh, that's not an even digit, there's some even digits. So now that we've achieved one switch of parity as we move along the row, because we've gone from odd to even. Now what we have to do is ensure that the whole row exhibits exactly three switches of parity. So let's put some, um, Odd numbers in now so now now we're up to one one switch as we hit the, the two four eight here a second switch as we switch to the three five seven nine and then by putting a six here we would complete the third switch so one way actually of thinking about this that might might be simpler is if the count on the left hand side of the grid is three we need to divide the row into four different areas of parity and you can see we've done that here if I color them in we've got uh, yeah, they can be purple again that can be blue so as we go along this row now we've got 
an odd digit on its own, followed by a section of even digits, another section of odd digits, and a section of even digits. So there are four different sections, which means there must be three flips of the parity. Um, so a very unusual rule set. I've no doubt knowing Richard, this is going to be superb. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see how we do. Now, I can see straight away, look, I've got four, seven, eight, and five, seven, eight, and nine. I can put in the 29 cage. Um, a 13 cage in four cells. That's got to contain a one. I don't think we know any more than that about it. There's another one of those there. A 28 cage in four cells has got to have an eight and a nine in it. Uh, and then two more cells summing up to 11. Uh, I'm not seeing much else. Um, oh, now. Column, ah, columns three and four are interesting because I know what the sum of those yellow cells is. Those yellow cells must sum up to 90. And if you're not sure why that is, let me reveal it. Um, if we looked at the finished solution to this puzzle, what digits would we find in those yellow cells there? Well, obviously, we'd find the digits from one to nine because it's a complete column of the Sudoku. So if you add up the digits one to nine, you get 45. So two complete columns must be worth 90. But if we look carefully at these columns, these 16 cells here, we, we actually know the sum of these 16 cells. All we have to do is to sum up the cage totals. So if we do that, we've got 49, 67, 82. So what do these two cells add up to? They must add up to 8 because 90 minus 82 is 8. Now, that unfortunately is not what I was hoping for because eight in two cells can be done in three different ways, three, five, two, six, and one, seven. So let's, no, we've got the same here in column six and seven. So let's try it here instead. Uh, so we've got 46, 15, oh, we've got 82 again. Um, right, so though, though that domino also adds up to eight and is also useless. Um, super. Now, let's... We've got a similar thing going, ah, look at uh, rows three and four, look, oops, if, you, if I could click correctly, you would see um, exactly the same pattern. So this time we've got, I think that's 13, 41, 70, 86. Aha, that is better. Why is it better? Well, what does this domino add up to? Well, that must be 90 minus 86 is four. So that must be one and three. Now, the first thing that strikes me when I see the one three here is that the ones are now approximately located in rows three and four in the sense that I know how many ones will there be in rows three and four? Well, there'll be two. There'll be one in row three, one in row four. Now, I know one of those ones is in one of those four squares because it's in the 13 cage. And I know one of those ones is in this domino here because this is a one three pair. So there can't be any more ones in these rows. So in the 16 cage, there is now no one, which means there is a two. And there's probably, and there, yeah, there, I was about to say there probably is a three. In fact, there is definitely a three. How do I know there's a three? Well, because if I add four, five, and six, which add up to 15 to two, I get too many, I get 17. So there must also be a three look in one of those cells. Ah, look. So now we know approximately where the threes go. The th two threes in these rows must be in these six cells. So there's no three in the 13 cage. So there must be a two. That's beautiful. It's just lovely logic, isn't it? It just flows so elegantly because now I know the composition of my 13 cage. If it's got a one and a two in it, it needs two more cells that sum up to 10. But it can't repeat the one, so it's not one nine. It can't repeat the two, it's not two eight. And we know it can't have a three in it, so it's not three seven. So this cage is one, two, four, and six. Okay. Um, okay, I don't think we can do more than that. We're, we're lacking 11 in the 28, yeah, we're at, Okay, we're adding, we're, we're missing two lots of 11, one that goes in the 16 cage, one that goes in the 28 cage, but I don't think we know which way round that goes yet. 
I've not actually used the parity at all either. So maybe we need to... Ah, yeah, let's look at column one. This has got exactly one switch of parity in it. So one way of thinking about that, looking at what we did with the three along here, is that in order for this to just switch parity once, we must be able to divide this column into two distinct regions only. So there's going to be an odd region and an even region. And that means all of the odds must be together and all of the evens must be together. Well, how many odd numbers are there between one and nine inclusive? There are five. So the only way you can divide this column uh, into two exactly two regions is if that is orange. By orange, I meant odd. <laughs> um, um, the way my brain works, who knows? Um, so this is orange for this is O. Oh, God, I don't know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I want to make this odd, and I'm going to label odd orange. So this is an orange cell, and yeah, this is lovely. This is lovely. Look at the thirteen now. The thirteen has only got one odd digit in it. So if, if we're trying to divide this column into exactly two regions, we know that either this is a continuous stream of odds or this is a continuous stream of odds. That's the only way we'll divide it into exactly two regions. Well, now we know that this can't be all odd because I wouldn't be able to fill both of these cells. So in fact, this must be all odd at the bottom and this must be all even at the top and therefore we can get rid of the one from there. There must be an eight in one of those two squares. And ah, one, ah, one and three, of course, are odd. Let's put that in. Ah, okay. Now I'm now my eyes are drawn to the seven clue, sort of the absolute opposite to the one clue in the sense that now we've got to have lots and lots of switches of parity. One less than the maximum, because if, um, if we think about the maximum number of switches we could put in, we could have a column that I suppose looked like that. And that would have eight switches of parity because I've managed to divide the column up into nine different uh, sections if you like so this one this is interesting because this one and this one are sort of off oh actually no that's a quite a good idea I've just had another idea actually I'll, let, I'll stick with my first idea <laughs> sorry <I'm, laughs> um, I'll stick with my first idea first the first idea is to focus on this row now how many switches of parity can I get between this even cell and this odd cell? And it's not very many. If I try, let's, let's try and get as many as we can. So I could do that. But now whatever I make this square, it's not going to add to the count. If I make this orange, I've got one, two, three switches of parity. If I make this blue, I've still got three. One, two, three. I need seven altogether. So in fact, in order to get four flip switches of parity from this digit onwards, I'm going to have to keep switching in every one of those cells. So I think these, both of those must be orange, both of these must be blue. Um, ah, ah, now that square is even. And it, well, look at the options for this cage. It's got to be an eight. That's the only even digit that can go in the 29 cage. This, this is even, so it's not three. This is odd, so it's not two. Um, now, can we keep going with this? This, ah, yeah, look, actually, I can label these as odd. And now look at this column. This column, um, because it's got consecutive cells here, 
that do not switch parity, the entire rest of this column will have to switch parity every time it can in order to get up to seven changes. So this square is going to have to be orange, that's going to have to be blue, that's going to be blue, that's going to be blue, that's going to be blue. Let's see if this works now. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven switches. Perfect. Um, okay. Now, the other thing, the, just to go back to the thought I had before, which is I was thinking about the fact that we know the parity of the first cell in each, each of these um, cells in column one. So given, can't I look at these digits and whether these are odd or even in order to predict what I'm going to have in, in the final cell of the column? That must be right. So when we have... Um, when we have a two clue here, that means we're dividing this row into three different regions. Therefore, the final region must have the same polarity as the first region. So this square has to be blue. And similar, so whenever you see an odd digit at the start, you know the polarity will switch. Whenever you see an even digit at the start, the polarity will or the parity will stay the same. So I think we can immediately just do that. Um, which is rather beautiful because now look at column nine. I've got one, two, three, four even digits. There are only four even digits between one and nine. So those become those become odd for the rest of the column. Now the two clue must be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting because in effect, now I've got evens spanning the odds odds in this row. We know the odds must be a continuous sequence because I need to divide this row into exactly three sections. One, two, so, up, so the odds must form a single region. Well, they can't get to this square, so this square must be even. It's blue, it's not a one, so that means this square is the one. That gives us a one here and a three here by Sudoku. That means that's not a three. Oh, uh, three, three is not even last time I looked, so the three must go there, and therefore that square is odd. And that's beautiful because now we can fill in the rest of this row. We've got to have a continuous odd sequence and an even sequence. That one, therefore, can't be a nine. That one can't be an eight. Oh, those can't be eight, so this one's an eight. I mean, it's just... I don't expect anything less from Richard Stolk. Um, I've done so many of his puzzles over the years now, but they are just, they are so good, it's ridiculous. Yet whenever he takes a rule set, he doesn't just do a puzzle based on, on, on the rule set, he does THE puzzle based on the rule set. Now, can we keep going? Well, one is definitely an odd number, so I'm going to label that odd. So we've got to have seven. Ah, that's interesting. So this is ambiguous. I don't know which way round this goes yet. Ah, but look, we've got a two clue in column six. How do I divide this into three regions? Well, I can't keep the even digits within their own region. I can't put four of them above this cell. So we know that even digits are split. So in, in other words, this must be a continuous sequence of evens followed by a continuous sequence of odds and then that must be an even at the end. That gives us five odd digits in box five so those must be even. <laughs> um, now yeah yeah look at the 18 box the 18 box has two even digits in it at the moment, which means these two squares also must sum to an even digit. That means they're both even or they're both odd. Well, they can't both be even or there'd be five even digits in box four. So these must both be odd and therefore they are orange. Um, I'm getting very close to... Oh, actually, look, I've got to divide this... Yeah, yeah, look, I've got to divide this line 
into four different regions. So I can't make this blue. If that's blue, it's definitely more than four regions. So that's orange, that's blue, that's orange to complete box six. This is blue to complete box four. Uh, now, what next? Apologies if you're seeing the next step before I spot it. That's very likely. Um, so this square has got to be a five, seven or a nine. I'm not sure whether I should do Sudoku now or whether I should do... Oh, look. Right, here we go. These three squares are adding up to an odd number because they're all orange. Therefore, this square must be blue in order to ensure that the whole box adds to an odd number. Uh, could probably use some of these six clues now. Let me just think about this for a second. One. Ah, where does one go in the 13 cage? It can't go there. It can't go in an even square, so it must go here. One must be in one of these two cells by Sudoku. We've done quite good work with most of the most of the cages now. We still don't know the parity of this one, which could be either way round. Ah, here we go. Row nine. Look, if that's if that's um, if that's even, look at the, how this row would develop. It would have a sequence of odds followed by a sequence of evens. Its count would be one. And its count is meant to be five. So this square must be orange. Oh, that was remarkably unhelpful, actually. Uh, but, but I suppose I can now get the value of this one. Because this is a six, it must keep the parity of the other side of the column. So that's orange. That gives me five oranges there. So that's blue. I've now, oh, this is unbelievable. Now I've got four blues in row, um, row two. The rest of it must be orange. So looking at the 21 now, I've got two, uh, two odd numbers. So that they are adding to an even number, which means this must be an odd and an even number to ensure it adds to an odd number in order to get overall to 21. Now that means one of these two squares is blue and that will create four blues in the row, so the other two cells must be orange. Um, now, now, okay. So, now I'll use this one. This is five. So, Oh, this is going to work as well. Look, so this, this is a five total, so we can use the orange at the top. It must flip its parity by the bottom. So this is now blue, and now I've got four blues in row nine. So these must all be orange. That completes the orange for column five, so we can do these ones in blue. Um, not quite completing these ones, look. But we can, no, this, I love this. It keeps catching me out because I keep forgetting it. But it's really clever. Now I've got these two as orange, so I can use the five and the six at the top to get the parity of these two. That one's going to have to exchange parity. That must keep its parity. That means I've got my four blues in box one. So that's orange. This is blue. I've now got five oranges in column three, so these are both blue. Two blues add up to an even number. In fact, look, I've got four, four blues in row seven, so those must both be odd. That's got to be even to make sure I get four here. That's got to be odd, and that's got to be even, and I've done the grid. There we go, video's finished. No, only joking. Um, I've now got to, but now I can forget about the outside clues. All we've got to do now, I say all, but what we've got to do now is to solve basically an odd-even Sudoku. 
Um, now, how shall we do? Oh, I just had a thought. Those two squares added up to, they added up to eight and they are even. So these are two and six. These two added up to eight and, but they are, oh, okay. So these are one, three, seven, and nine. Are there, are, not in the one, what? Seven or five. These are either three, five, or one, seven. Ah, two things I'm noticing here. Uh, by Sudoku, where does the one go in box two? It must be in an odd square. So there is a one in the 23 cage. Therefore, there is a nine in the 23 cage because the, 23, the other three cells have got to add up to 22. So this is either five, eight, nine or six, seven, nine. The other thing I noticed was the three here. The three, where does the three go in box five? It's got to go in the 13 cage. So, now that's interesting. That's interesting. So if I look at these columns now, you can see that I've managed to find one three so far. There must be a three in one of these two cells. I can't put a three in here because it's it would make the total too small. So there must be a three in, in one of the cells of the 17 cage and it can only be there because that's the only odd digit. That means there's a three down here. Now, so these squares are two, four, or six. So, okay, yeah, I've got, I've got to make three even digits here, add up to exactly 14. So that means they must include an eight, a two, and a four. That's the only way of doing that. So this square must be an eight. This must therefore not include a six. That means that square is a six in the column. That's a two. These two squares are four and six. Look, to complete this column. That can't be a four. That can't be a four because there's a one and a nine. And if this was a four, I'd have to repeat the nine in the cage. So this is a six and this is a one, seven, nine triple. That's a four. Ah, and it joins a three. So now we know that this is one, four, three, and it must be a five. This is a three, five pair. That means there's no five there. That means this is a five. That means there's no five here. And now there must be a one. Ah, there's no one here. Okay. And that was gorgeous but I appear to have run out of steam with it. Um, so this digit is an even number, so it's definitely not nine. And it can't be eight because it's an eight in the box. So, ah, and it, ah, oh, this is a single because there's a two, four in the box and an eight in the cage. So that's a six. They add up to 14, so these two have to add up to 14, so they can't both be 7, or you'd repeat 7 in the cage. So this is a 9, this is a 5, this is a 7, that's a 9. 7 now must appear in the 23 cage, so it's there. This is not 1 anymore, so this is not 7 anymore. This is not 5 anymore either, so this is not 3. Where does, where does 3 go in box 8? This 3 plonks it into that square. It's the only place it can go. So this is now a 5-7 pair. And this is a 2-4-8 pair. Or triple, I should say. These 3 even digits have to sum up to 12. So they have to be 2, 4 and 6. They, don't, they can't include an 8. So there's an eight there, which means there's an eight in the 
is that an 18 cage? I can't quite see. Yeah, an 18 cage. 18 cage has got an 8 in it. This has got to be 2, 4 or 6 in the 21 cage. It, oh no, hang on. There's a 1 in the 21 cage, so it can't have a 2 in it. Otherwise we couldn't get it up to the right total. So if this has got a 4 in it, it would need a 7 and a 9 as well. If it's got a 6, it would need... It's less clear. Is there definitely a 6 here? No. If this was a 6, I would still need... I'd need 5 and 9. Which could have a 5 here. I can't see why that's impossible. That would be a 9. No, sorry, that looks possible. Um, so, where shall I look now? <laughs> uh, oh, the three is giving me a three over on this side. So we need... That's not four, look, just by Sudoku. So there's a four in one of those, so that's not four. There's a six here, that's good. So that gets us done here, that gets us done here. These two add up to... 5, these add up to 11, they are 4 and 7, but we don't, oh, we might know the order once I take the highlighting off, because presumably one of them is even, and it's that one, yeah, 4, 7, 4 must hide in the corner now, by Sudoku, so it must be in a blue square, this must be 8, where does the 2 go in this column, it can only go here, that must be the 6, the 2 and the 4 get fixed, this must be a 4, this must be an 8, and suddenly, I think the even digits are starting to yeah they are they're falling six and eight here these must add up to six so and they're both odd so they are one and five therefore this square is a nine the one five are pointing at this oh dear this tr double pair so one nine go in there this square must be a seven because it's the last odd in its row those two squares have got to be a one, oopsie, a one five pair. These three odd numbers have got to sum up to, oh, I think I've already looked at this, haven't I? Oh no, now I've got the four, I can do it. This must be one seven nine, which means the nine must be here. This must be one and seven. Therefore, these two squares have got to be 5 and 9, which we can now do. 9, 5, 5, 1, 1, 5. Um, those two squares are 7 and 9, which is resolved. And these two squares are 3 and 7, which is resolved. That resolves the 7 and the 1. That resolves the 7 and the 5. Maybe I should actually, what I might do now is go back to the even digits again because that must be six, look, just by Sudoku. These squares have got to be two and four. This has got to be a two. Uh, I've got the eight in this one. There must be an eight in one of those two. In fact, no, let's do it more sensibly. There must be an eight in exactly this one. So this is two. This, uh, this, sorry, I'm just not doing my Sudoku very well, but I will try and improve that now. This must be 8, because it's the only place an 8 can go in the row. This gives us a 2, 4 here, which makes this a 6. This 6 fixes the 6 and the 4. And I feel like I've got deadly patterns here. Oh no, the 4 here, maybe that's... I have got deadly patterns. So it's the 18 cage, I think, that's going to resolve how this falls out. Let's look at the 23, though. We've got 11 here, so these add up to 12 without using 7 or 8. So this is a 3-9 pair. There's a 3 here. Oh, it's just stunning. It's just stunning. Um, 7 must go there now. Let's have a look at this column. We know that this is an odd digit. It must be a 5. 1, 3, and 9 to place. The 3 must go here. This column needs a 1. That square's got to be a 5. This is a 1-9 pair. We can fill that in. And look, it's just going to be this, this little cage here, which adds up to 16 at the moment. It needs 18. So 2, 4, 4, 2. 15 cages working as well. 
beautiful yes and correct i hope you enjoyed that that's just stunning absolutely stunning from start to finish the epitome of elegance thank you to richard thank you for watching and we'll be back soon with another edition of cracking the cryptic <laughs>